start setting up your camera in the forest you need to be sure that you have all of the equipment that you require and of course the primary thing that you need is the camera trap. The camera trap sits in a steel security box. The steel security box is secured to the tree by a webbing strap and then after the camera goes into the security box the whole lot is secured by this cable lock which is like a bicycle lock and it's got us it's got a unique key which fits into this part which is the locking mechanism you also need a 55 centimeter stick with a bright tape attached to one end and you need to have three tape measures that go out to at least 20 meters you need to have a bunch of brightly colored tapes or strings which will be fixed to the three tape measures. You need to have a pair of secateurs. You need to have a data sheet with a clipboard to record all the data on and you need to have a set of numbers that are in uh, waterproof laminated covers which will be used to create the reference video and you need to have one sheet on which you can put with an effaceable marker the ID of the camera, the GPS points, the date and the sight of each individual camera which you hold up in front of the camera while it's recording. So this is a Browning camera trap, a camouflaged model. It has two camera lenses, one for the night, one for the day. It has the motion sensor at the top and it has two infrared flashes either side and these are invisible to the animals so they don't get a shock when they're being photographed. You get into the camera from the side. There's this clip that you pull gently because you can break it and that allows a little door to open which reveals all the workings of the camera. It runs on six batteries which are in this little compartment here. You press this button, click, there they are. You should always use lithium batteries. Alkaline batteries are known to, if they start going down, then the whole camera just stops working and then you may lose a lot of important photographs. Push it back in again, click. All the photos are stored on an SD card, which are here. You can have all sorts of different sizes. And when you're changing your SD card, make sure the camera's off. So when you're going to do the camera setup, for whatever you need, you switch on and this gives you 10 seconds of a little video like that. That's what the camera can see out of the lens. So if you wave your hand in front of it, you can see that it's taking pictures of what it can see. To start that little video again, you press OK. Off it goes again. And it clicks down 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and then it goes to a blank screen. To, to start it again you just press OK again. Make sure that it's 100% full, the batteries, before you leave the camera for a month in the forest. Make sure it's set on video. Okay. And to do the, all, all the settings, you press M for menu. 
and that gives you access to all of the different you know length of the video type of photograph that's going to be taken you just move up and down like this and when you're satisfied with all of that um, you press menu again and then it goes back to this countdown and then you just shut the door clip it shut and fix it on the tree and then you're it's ready part of making sure that you know the camera is taking pictures is when you're in this this parameterizing uh, window in menu you go down until it says motion test where is it here it is okay and you press okay and then if something moves in front of the camera it will flash so you know that it's recording it's detecting something moving in front of the camera and then to quit from that you just press OK again so this is the support for the camera it's the bottom half of the steel security box and it will be placed against the tree like that at the correct height and then the camera will sit in it like that facing in the correct direction. The first thing we do is we fix the support to the tree. It's um, supported by a webbing belt which goes in the back out again and make sure that this spring-loaded device has the push button on the outside and that all of it is aligned with the tree trunk flat and you bring the whole thing quite far around so that the, the spring-loading mechanism is around the back of the tree like that okay Then you know that you wanted the camera to be at about 50 centimeters from the forest floor. This simple looking piece of equipment is actually rather important. It's a piece of very straight wood and it's got a brightly colored ribbon on the end that you can see it from a distance. And we cut it so that when it's in the ground, it's 55 centimeters long and you leave a bit at the end because you want it to be able to be stuck into the ground. So you have your 55 centimeter stick and you can see that that's a tiny bit high because the camera lens has to be about there so then you lower this whole thing a tiny bit and this is where the two technicians can work together to make sure that it's at the right height and then tighten it up. When you're setting up a camera trap in the forest, you want to avoid that the sun is shining directly into the lens. So to minimise that, you face it in the direction where it's going to get least direct sunlight into it. So whatever hemisphere you're in, you don't face it east and you don't face it west, otherwise it will get the rising sun and the setting sun. If you're in the northern hemisphere, most of the sunlight uh, most of the year comes from the south, so you, you face it to the north, and that's what we're doing here. We're in Scotland, and that's the north. If you're in the southern hemisphere, it's the other way around. And you verify your direction, obviously, with a compass. This is a um, precision compass. You can see that the north is over there. If you want to get an exact bearing with a precision compass, you have to look through the little window but you don't have to do that initially with this setup. You fix the camera on the tree facing more or less north so that um, it's not blocked by any large object in front of it. So you have the latitude to have it, you know, 20 or 30 degrees either side of north um, to get the best visibility possible. And then when the camera is completely fixed to the tree, 
that's when you take the exact direction in which it's facing with the compass. Once we've got the camera support on the tree and we know more or less in which direction it's going to face, we want to make sure that um, it's aligned so that it's not just seeing the floor or it's not just seeing the, the canopy of the trees. And for that, we have a tape measure, we put it a metre in front of the camera, and we have a handy stick which we used earlier, and we put it in the ground. And then when the camera is on the support and we open the little door so that the video screen of the camera can see what's going on, this ribbon, if we just move this away, this, this highly visible ribbon should be right in the middle of the video screen of the camera. After you've put the support in more or less the right direction, facing the north, you then take the camera and then it sits in on, on top of the support and you keep the door open. And then you run the first central tape measure from the tree out to 15 metres. Then you switch the camera on and you make sure that the, you can see the tape measure in the middle of the little video screen so you know that the camera is oriented correctly towards the right and the left. And if it's not, you can move this slightly uh, with the assistant releasing the webbing strap slightly and you can move it round a little bit and then tightening it so that then the left-right orientation is correct. When that's correct, you can then use your stick with the ribbon on the end at one metre from the camera and make sure that the camera is oriented in that direction so that it's not looking too far down and not looking too far up. In other words, that this is in the centre horizontally and vertically off the camera. And when you're satisfied with that, then eventually the door will be shut. That sits nicely on its support and the rest of the metal box goes on top and it just slots in like that. And then you can use the cable lock and put it in one side, underneath, out the other, and that stops anybody being able to remove the top half of the cable. And you put it round the tree and you pull it tight and you lock it and you take away the key with you for when you're um, going to come back the next time. Once you've got your camera on the support and the tape measure out in front of the camera, get an assistant to stand astride the tape and then look at the little video on the camera itself and make sure that the camera is positioned so that the image of that person is right in the middle of the photograph because that means the tape is right in the middle. If the person isn't aligned correctly, you move the whole support round to the right or to the left until their image is in the middle and at that point you know that the camera is facing the right way. The next thing to do is you look for the image of the little ribbon on the stick that's at one metre from the camera and you make sure that the ribbon is vertically in the middle of the screen. If it's not then you take a piece of wood and you put it behind the support of the camera here and you may need to loosen the webbing until the camera is angled so that the, this ribbon is in the middle horizontally 
off the screen and that means that the maximum types of animals, small and large, passing in front of the camera will be most likely to get their photographs taken. So before you leave the camera to take pictures of animals over the next month, you leave the initial tape measure on the ground in the middle and you measure the angle, um, you know, the bearing of that tape measure with your compass. So with this compass, we know it's roughly towards the north, but actually it's two degrees. So we have a setup sheet with each camera and the orientation of this particular camera is two degrees. So we know that when we come back to do the reference video for this camera that we have to, we know how wide each make of camera uh, has for a field of view. Sometimes it's 45, sometimes it's 42, some makes even have something like 75. You take that field of view that's um, written on the manufacturer's details for the camera, you divide it in half, and the, that half you add or subtract to the direction of the camera um, at this particular point. So, for example, if the field of view of this camera is, say, 40 degrees, then your two tape measures that are on either side will be at plus 20 and minus 20 from your two degrees um, that this camera is pointing at. Once the camera is attached firmly to the tree, facing in the right direction, you've written down the orientation of the camera, you then collect up the first tape measure and um, the camera will be ready to take pictures for a month um, on its own and then after that you come back and you do uh, the reference video which is when you put three tape measures out on the ground and you have somebody holding a card at different distances. If somebody moves the camera to another orientation during that month, you'll need to put it back to the original orientation before you make that reference video. So sometimes maybe a chimpanzee will fiddle around with it or an elephant might kick it and it might move it slight, slightly to one side or the other. And a clever way of knowing what the original direction of the camera was is you just take a black sharpie, a marker pen, and you put it here, you actually right on the bark of the tree in the middle of where the camera support was so that you can put it back to where it was before you make a reference video. I'm locking the security box. You, put, you have um, a standard cable lock, just like for a bicycle. You put it in, one side, and out. There's a similar hole at the other side. You pass it around the tree of times kind of looks like a vine if it doesn't go around twice you just make it go around once and here this is important you see there's an arrow there you put your cable in that way and then you lock it so that it looks a little bit like this the head of a viper and that's its tongue 
If you put it in this way and you lock it, actually it's not locked. So you must always put the, the tongue of the snake in through the back of its head following the arrow and tighten it up and then when it's completely tight you lock it and then you take the key out and then you can tighten it but you it won't go this way and you notice that I have tied a piece of pink ribbon onto the key because when you drop it on the forest floor by accident you can see it again. We now have the centre line, which is two degrees. We are going to put out two tape measures at um, the correct angle on each side of it. We know that for this particular camera, half of the field of view is 27 degrees. This centre line was at two degrees. 27 plus two is 29 degrees. So we'll have one tape measure going at 29 degrees bearing on the compass. The other one is 2 degrees minus 29 degrees, so the bearing I'm going to direct our assistant is 335 degrees. So all three ends of the tape measure are held at the bottom of the camera and then the person at the camera directs the person with the tape measure, giving them a target telling them to walk through. So Lynn, uh, you see the little ash seedling just in front of you to the left? Go to the right of that. And stop. And now walk one large pace to your right. And half a pace, a very small pace to your right. and pull the tape measure a little bit. So while we're laying out this reference video, any movements that we make up and down the array, we trample the vegetation as little as possible within this spider web of tapes so that the vegetation is as intact as it possibly can be um, when we make the actual reference video. We can walk as much as we like to either side, to the right hand side of the right tape or the left hand side of the left tape, but don't trample the vegetation inside the V shaped. Eight, six, seven. One, two, three, four. So, yeah, it's good to lay them out in order so that you know that you have them all. And then you go and tie them all out uh, using bulldog clips. So if we go out to number 12, I can go out, this is the 12 tape, it's going to be attached on the tape measure at the 12 metre mark for all of the three tapes that are out there. This is the 15 metre ribbon that we put at the 15 metre marker, which is here, on the right hand tape. And we've got these handy little bulldog clips. We put it here and we just clip it on. There we are. Here's the number 12 tape. It's going to go on to 12 meters here. 
we're going to clip it on with a bulldog clip. Then we take it to the middle and we try not to move the tapes on the ground too much. We find the number 12 meters here. We loop it around once. We get a bent metal in the eye. And we take it across to 12 meter point here. Clip. And we do the same thing, 15 meters, 12 meters, 10 meters, and then every one meter until we get to in front of the camera. We've come back to the tree after a month. The camera is now full of images, so the first thing to do is unlock it. So remove the padlock. We've got our key, which we brought with us, and we open it. We pull the cable. Okay. Now remember, see how the padlock's like a snake's head? And the end of the cable is like its tongue. Remember that when we closed the lock, we put the cable in following the direction of the arrow, here, so that the tongue comes out of its mouth. And then we pulled it, and we took the key out. If you do it that way, after you've closed the lock, you can continue to tighten it, but you can't loosen it. If you try and close the lock in this direction, where the tongue comes out of the back of the head, it won't work. And any poacher could steal your camera. So always, when you close the padlock, it's in the direction of the arrow, like a snake's tongue. Anyway, you take the cable out and you put it neatly with the rest of the equipment. And then we can just take off the outer part of the security box and we'll then make a reference video with this camera and the arrangement that we have laid out on the ground. got to the camera, we've taken off the cable lock from the camera, we've put out a ray of tapes and ribbons and now we're going to make a video of somebody holding up cards at each of these distances from the camera trap while the camera trap is filming them and that way you can compare this what we call the, the reference video with any videos of animals that walk in front of the camera. Because remember, the camera is in the same place as where we left it. It's already got a bunch of animals inside the SD card. And now we're going to have the reference video in the camera. So we take the outside of the security box off. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check that it's still working. So we pick up the camera, we open it, we press the OK button. We can see that it's still working. We can even um, look backwards to see if it's taken other, other videos. So you can see this is actually a video. So it's functioning fine. And it's set on two minutes video. That's the maximum. So we put this back and we're just going to sit it in its little box and now the technician at the far end is going to start with 
the 15 meters videos, the 10, the 12, the 10, the 8, you know, 9, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, showing where each distance is in front of the camera. Now we're ready to do the reference video. We start with the furthest distance away. In this case it's 15 metres. The person with the cards will first of all show the 15 metres and she will follow the 15 metres line. Then she'll come a little bit closer and do the 12 metres. You see the red dot on the diagram here. So walking to the 12 metres, and again going horizontally, then doing the 10 metres, and then doing the 9 metres, etc, etc. Sometimes in the forest, where the undergrowth is pretty dense, the movement of the person at a distance won't trigger the camera, so the responsibility of the person next to the tree is that he or she must trigger the camera with his or her own body. At the same time, She'll announce the distance because the camera, once it's triggered, records not only visual but audio input. So now I'm going to trigger the camera and announce 15 metres and I say to the person waiting at 15 metres to start showing the distances with the numbered cards. So I'm going to start the camera um, rolling by um, going in front of the motion sensor. Six meters. Six meters.
So now when we've finished our reference video, we check in the camera to make sure that the videos have all been taken. So it's still on, we click your OK. We can see what's in front of the video and we can go backwards and forwards to see what the last videos were taken were. And if all of the reference videos are there, then that's great. We can switch off the camera, put it carefully away in its travelling container and pack up all the stuff and go off to our next camera to do the same thing again.